In today's video, I'm going to show you three different methods to repair your photos using exposure blending. Now I'm going to do this in Luminar Neo, but if you're a Photoshop user, you still might enjoy this video because it's the same methodology, just a slightly different interface. The practices are still the same, but if you're interested in maybe a Photoshop version of these same edits that I'm going to do, post a comment down below and let me know. And if I get enough requests, I might put that together for you. If you don't know me, I'm Gavin Hardcastle and I make pretty pictures for a living. I create photography courses, I do landscape photography books like these, I teach workshops and I sell fine art photography prints of images like these. All right, so let's get into this tutorial. I think you're gonna like this. All right, so here I am in Luminar Neo and I've got a problem with this image. Well, I, I mean, I love the image and if you just watched my most recent photo tripper video, you might recognize this image for while I was shooting at Iceland. But what you may notice is this has a really long exposure. And in that video, I did this whole thing where I was talking about doing a faster exposure that had more texture. Anyway, I messed this up because I spent, I don't know, 25 minutes editing this image, doing all the contrast and the, the sky blending and all that kind of stuff, only to realize that I'd used the long exposure. So how do I fix that? I've done all that work. I don't want to start from scratch. So what I figured out was I would just drop in a faster exposure and then use exposure blending to mask the parts in that I wanted just of the waterfall. I'm going to show you exactly how I did that. So here we are in Luminar Neo and you can see this finished image is on this bottom layer here. So how do I bring in the repair? Well, you've got this other plus icon here to add a new layer. So I'm going to click on that and load in this preloaded layer that I've already shot called fast exposure. So I'm going to double click on that and that's then going to load that image on top of the long exposure. So you can see it here. Now by default, Luminar will put this at 50%. So if I push this up to 100%, you can see the sky is completely blown out. At the time, I, I really didn't care because all I was shooting for was that, that fast exposure. I had plenty of sky exposures to blend in that beautiful sunrise. So if I pull that down to zero, what you're looking at now is 100% of the layer underneath it and 0% of the layer on top. But what I want to do is crank that all the way up to 100% so I can see what I'm actually working with. You can also right click on this and go hide layer and now I'm looking at the layer underneath. Then I'll go right click show layer to display this layer that's on top. So how am I going to blend that, just, just, just that waterfall? with that finished image underneath on that bottom layer. It's dead simple. What I'm going to do, if you look at my layer properties, by the way, I'm in my edit tab. So look at my layer properties and look for masking. Now, if you're not seeing these options down here, you probably just got to click on this little arrow here just to, just to display those. So the first thing I want to do, I don't want to actually see this layer at all until I start to brush that in to create a mask. So the first thing I have to do is click fill and that will fill that entire frame with that layer. And if you want to see that, you just hit show and everything is red. What that's telling you is your entire frame has been masked in, but we don't want that. We just want a little part to be masked in. So what I'm going to do now is hit invert. Now it's invisible. So that's basically, you could call it like an empty mask. There really isn't a mask yet until I start to brush parts of it in. So what I'm gonna do is go to my brush tool. So if you look at these size settings, that's, that's just set like that because that was what I was practicing with. I can make that brush smaller by hitting my left bracket key and that's probably about perfect. Now what I'm gonna do is paint in this mask. I'm gonna create this mask. So I wanna click on paint, not erase, paint. So now I'm just going to click and you see that red haze that that signifies the area that I'm brushing in. So let's just brush that in there like that and let go. So what you're looking at now is this big red blob. That red blob signifies where the mask is. So if I want to get rid of that, I just click on properties. So now you can see I've got this lovely patch where that fast exposure is. If I right click here, hide layer, that's the one underneath. Right click show layer, that's my lovely patch. Problem being, the sky doesn't look right, does it? It looks absolutely rubbish, but we can fix that very easily. So I'm going to go to masking. 
and then I'm going to go to Mask AI. That's going to analyze the image and try and figure out which parts of it are sky and, oh look, there you go. So you've got all of these options here in Mask AI. I want to click on sky. So you can see now it's, it's selected just the sky. The sky has gone red. It's now part of a mask, but I want it to be the opposite. I want to deselect that. So I'm going to hit it one more time and bosh. It's now removed that from the mask. Now, if I go to properties, we can see without that sky patching, how good that mask was, but it's not perfect. Like if I zoom in, you can see here, it needs a little bit of work. So let's fix that. I'm going to go back to masking click on mask AI and go back to my brush tool. And this time, instead of paint, I'm going to go erase. And I'll probably get a smaller brush hitting that left bracket key. And I'll brush in from about here. And I'll just take that bit out. Look at that. That's fixed that. We'll do the same all the way along here. By the way, you'll have to forgive my voice. It's, it's, it's a little bit rough because I've got the flu. Let me just go on there. Go on there. Oh yeah, that's Bobby Dazzler, is that? Control zero to zoom out. Look at that, absolutely gorgeous little patch. So if I right click, hide layer, that's my layer underneath. Right click, show layer, that's my layer on top with that beautifully masked in patch. So yeah, that's that's pretty impressive, I think, so far. Quite Where's a... your Guinness, love? No, it's, uh, it's coffee, it's not Guinness, love. It even says world's best cup of coffee, it's not Guinness. It doesn't smell like coffee. No, it's coffee. All right, thanks, I really appreciate that. See ya. Right, so I can make this even better by taking this one stage further. So if you look at this area of the waterfall on this patch and then compare it to the one underneath, you'll see that the one underneath has quite a bit more contrast. It's a bit, it's a bit darker in the shadows. Perhaps I've overdone it a little bit there, but with this patch, I feel like that needs a bit more of that. So what I'm gonna do is go down to develop here and I'm just gonna pull those shadows down a little bit and I'll maybe increase the smart contrast just a little bit so I'll switch that off that's before I did that contrast boost switch it on that looks a bit more like the one underneath it so if I right click hide layer that's the original so sort of pay attention to the contrast and darkness of those shadows right click show layer and I feel like that patch is a little bit more like the layer underneath. But what if you decided, oh, I'm not sure if I like this bit of spray that's coming up here. What, what if you wanna get rid of that? Dead easy, go back to masking, brush, and this time we'll click on erase. So you're gonna get your brush and we'll get a little, slightly bigger brush and just brush in that area there and take it out. And again, a little bit more. So that's now taken that spray that you could see in the air out of that area there. If we switch that off, hide layer, bring it back on, show layer. Now, if you're enjoying this, you'll really enjoy my course, Exposure Blending Simplified, which is on sale right now in my Halloween sale. There's a link in the description and you can use the coupon code ghostly24 to get 30% off. Right, let me show you another repair. All right, this one isn't, strictly speaking, an exposure blend, but, but it kind of is. It's just a blend using the same exposure instead of a different one. So what I've got is this lovely shot. I really like this shot of this river with this gorgeous autumn tree leaning over. The only thing I don't like, and I, I even knew this as I was shooting it, is this, this patch of non-reflection. Well, it's, it's a full reflection, but it's, it's reflecting a bit of sky, a bit of gray sky instead of these trees. I wanna fix that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is right click on this layer and click duplicate layer. So now I have just an exact carbon copy of the bottom layer with another one on top. It's just, it's just the same thing. So what I wanna do is create a patch where I can fix this crappy part of the reflection. And it's dead simple. What you do is you go to layer properties and hit this to flip it vertically. And then I'm gonna click and then drag this flipped layer down over here until I've got a little patch, something like that. Then I'm gonna to go to masking. I'm gonna to go to fill and then invert so you can't see it at all. Then I'm gonna to go to brush. I'm gonna to go to paint and I'm just gonna brush that little patch into there. Okay, so that looks better, but it's all going in the wrong direction, right? You can see these, these swirls 
are not quite working. Well, we're gonna fix that by blurring that patch. So what I'm gonna do is scroll down here to my blur tool. Where is it, where is it? Go here, where are you? There it is, blur. And then I'm just gonna go motion. I'm gonna crank the amount up to, let's say there. And then the angle, I'm gonna take it down to minus 90. So it's like a, it's like a vertical blur. And already that's looking better. I think all I've gotta do now is just reposition it. So I'm gonna go back to my layer properties. You can see it's got these orange handlebars around it. And I'm just gonna drag that down until I start to see that white bit of sky, which I don't like. And then I'm just gonna move that over there like that. That looks pretty good. I'm, I'm, I would say I'm convinced by that patch. If you didn't know what I'd just done there, I think you would fall for that. So let's right click, hide layer. That's the original. Right click, show layer. Absolutely, Bobby Dazzler. I think that deserves another sip of my Guinness. I mean, <laughs> slip of the tongue, coffee. Now, if you wanna pick up your own copy of Luminar Neo and try this out for yourself, I've got my affiliate link down in the description below with a little coupon code to help you save money. And it's a really good way of supporting this channel. Okay, so you can see I've got this nice picture of the Aurora Borealis from my backyard with the truck and the camper there in the foreground. But it's a little bit dark, isn't it? I, I kind of like the darkness of the sky. There's lots of texture. I didn't want to overexpose that, but everything below the tree line is just a little bit too dark. So of course I shot an extra frame that was overexposed much longer to gather as much light as I could. So let's load that one on top of this. So I'm gonna click on this plus icon here and there's my preloaded image. Double click on that and that will drop that image on top as the top layer. So there, there you can see it. And obviously the sky is kind of blown out, right? Well, it's not blown out, but it's, it's very lacking in detail. Whereas if I right click and show you the one underneath, perfect sky, but everything else is too dark. So I'm gonna right click, show layer. Now, if you look over here in my layer properties, you'll see that it's set to 50%. If I pull that up to 100%, you're not looking at anything underneath that. You cannot see any of the bottom layer. Whereas if I bring it down to 50%, there's a bit of a blend there. So let's bring that up to 100%. So how am I gonna blend this? Well, it's dead simple. I'm gonna go to masking. I'm gonna go to mask AI. Now it's gonna analyze the image and try and figure out what it's actually looking at. Now, I don't want the sky. That's specifically what I don't want. What I want is transport, which is the truck and the camper. I want natural ground, which is just that bit of grass there. And I want flora, which is those trees. So it's made a mask, which you could see in red, of everything below the sky. And you can see there's a few dark areas where it hasn't quite picked the little bits of shadow area up, but that's fine, we can fix that. So now I'm gonna to go to mask, and I'm gonna to go to brush, and I'm gonna to go to paint. And what I'm gonna do is click on those areas that didn't quite get added to the mask and fill those in with red and you can see they are now part of the mask. And look at that, I've got this transition between the bright exposure and the darker sky exposure. But you can see this fairly ugly transition here on the tree line, so let's fix that. Now let's go to erase and I'm gonna zoom in and we'll just brush some of that out. Let's get a bigger brush. So let's just take that out. You can see that's gone now. And just reveal the layer underneath, which is much darker. And that's fixed that. I could use a smaller brush just for this one here, because you can just see this little edge on the top of my lovely old Bigfoot, which just so happens to be for sale. If you're interested, link in the description, get in touch. And then we'll just brush this here. Oh, full fiberglass camper, as best you can get. You know, just waterproof, no leaks. <laughs> right, bigger brush for this over here. <clears throat> and then just take that out. So that's, that's pretty good, right? But if we zoom out, control zero, to look at it as a whole, you can see the tops of the trees are just a little bit dark, right? They're, they're just, you can see that transition still but we can fix that. Remember that 50% opacity? So let's go back to our layer properties and let's pull down this opacity slider just 
just a little bit. I don't think we need to do too much with it, just to make that transition much smoother. Because if you put it up to 100%, it, it does actually look a bit unnatural in that the, the camper and the truck, they're a little bit too bright almost. So there's two ways of doing this. I can either pull down the opacity of that so that we get a nice, what, what looks like a fairly natural blend, or I could leave it as it is, and I could just make it a bit darker. So let's try that. Let's go to develop, and I can either turn down the exposure just a little bit. Actually, that looks pretty good. But I could also make the shadows a bit darker if I wanted to. I don't really want to do that because I don't want to lose detail. So I think just turning down the exposure on that is probably about perfect. So let's switch that off, hide layer. That's what I started off with. Look at that complete loss of detail and content. Right click, show layer, and it brings it back. And when you do that comparison, when you do the show hide, I actually think I, I could maybe go a little bit darker. Let's just bring that down to about there. There you go, that is now looking more like a natural nighttime Aurora shot. And I'm really happy with the results. Now, do you remember that first Iceland image with the big waterfall? Well, if you want to watch me capturing that image in Iceland, there's a video here where I take you on an adventure through some absolutely spectacular scenery. If you enjoyed this video, please give it the old thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, don't forget to tickle my bell, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.